Okay, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This movie is one of the most fun things I have watched in quite a while. This is Nightmare at Noon from 1988, available now on Blu-ray from Arrow Home Video. Got a little story, and it, like most of mine, pointless goes nowhere. When I was a youth, I haunted the video stores. And back in my day, uh, this would have been, video stores had been around a little bit, so when this movie came out, so 1988, 89, whenever it hit video, by that point, my little hometown uh, in a corner of New Hampshire had like six video stores. And a couple of big video stores, but every neighborhood, more or less, like a gas station, including in gas stations, had video places, places you could rent videos, supermarkets, gas stations, convenience stores, uh, electronic stores, hardware stores, um, did I say grocery stores already? And uh, in actual, you know, standalone video stores. We didn't have chains at that point. They were all just independent, as we now say, mom and pop shops. And I would hit them all the time because they all got mostly different stuff. The biggest, biggest hits everybody would get. But other than that, they all would get different things from different smaller distributors and different, uh, they had different catalog titles. So I would like make the rounds as often as possible. And one of the places was a beverage distributor slash convenience store that was pretty sizable. In the back corner, they had a rack of videotapes for, uh, for rental. And the, the, up front, they had videotapes for rental that were like kind of expensive for the day. Like they were like a $3 one night rental. But in the back, they had two day rentals that were like a dollar or a dollar fifty, and then Monday and Tuesday they'd be two for one. So you, it's like cheap rental. So I, that's how I saw the Chuck Norris movies. That's how I saw the Canon stuff. And on one of those tapes, told you that story to tell you this one. On that one of those tapes was a trailer for Nightmare at Noon, and I remember thinking this movie looks weird. This looks goofy. I wonder this. It could be good. It could be terrible. And this is one of those cases that I'm having a lot now where. 30 years later, maybe longer than that in some cases, I'm finally finding out what movies were like that I saw on the shelf all the time as a kid. So Nightmare at Noon is what we're talking about today. This is a directed by Nico Mastarakis, Greek director who Arrow has put in a lot of Nico Mastarakis stuff out. I think they must have signed a deal with his uh, mega entertainment to put out like most of his library. I mean, from like early 70s Jalo-esque stuff that he did to up into 90s action stuff. And his stuff I always tend to be very commercial. So Nightmare at Noon shot in, uh, I wanna say Utah, Moab, I think that's Utah. Uh, amazing landscape. Uh, the film basically, well, let me, let me tell you who's in it. You got Brian James, who if you don't know the name, you will recognize as an albino, uh, strange high-tech bad guy. You've got Bo Hopkins, who I met once and asked him about tentacles. You've got Kimberly Beck, who you'd recognize. You have George Kennedy. You have, uh, I, th I think there might be one or two other people that you would recognize in this film. And uh, the plot basically is Brian James shows up at night with this all clad in like a white jumpsuit with the, uh, the white hair and, you know, white eyes. And he's in the back of some high tech van with all the boodly 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 stuff going on. And he creates this little green vial, puts it in this high-tech gun, shoots it into a reservoir, and then the next day comes back and just starts watching from afar to see what happens. And what happens is, essentially, uh, he has put some weird poison or agent into the water supply, and the townsfolk turn into like these strange green blood uh, dripping, like rage zombies, let's say. And uh, the people, aforementioned people who have uh, have not drank in the, uh, not had anything to drink from a faucet, as it were, um, are trying to figure out what's going on and how to stop it. So it feels like a 50s sci-fi movie. I can't tell you any one in specifically, but it does feel like a bunch of people are trapped in this remote desert town with giant, gorgeous mountains all around them. And the townsfolk who they know are just one by one turning into maniacs. And they, the only way to stop them is to blow them away, like repeatedly. <laughs> so as the film goes, so you've got basically, oh, Wings Hauser, Wings Hauser is also in this film. And uh, the, the dynamics are George Kennedy is the local sheriff and his daughter is a deputy. You have Wings Hauser and Kimberly Beck as a couple in this weird badass like high tech uh, RV traveling through the desert. They pick up Bo Hopkins, this drifter who seems to know his way around weapons as a hitchhiker. And they are the ones in this small town who are trying to fend off evil and insanity. And uh, as the movie goes, it just gets more and more outrageous and intense. You have 
the stunts, oh, the stunts, oh, the stunts keep getting higher and higher in quality too. So you go from, you know, hey, guys jumping through a window to us oh, is a car crash. And then you get a car careening out of control, uh, cr crashing into an already uh, gigantic inferno of car, corks going through the air on fire. You get a guy on a motorcycle driving into a parked car that then explodes in a giant fireball. And he f somersaults through the air without the motorcycle with his ass on fire. Uh, it's just like, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a film. And then you get this insane like, Blue Thunder quality or higher helicopter chase. I don't want to give it all away, but uh, you've got an abandoned drive-in, which I meant to look up to see which one it is because I'm a, I'm a driving kind of guy. You've got a shootout at an abandoned drive-in. You can see inside the projection booth a little bit. Uh, this movie was a ton of fun. It's silly. It's goofy. It's not uh, a think piece. It doesn't have a lot to say, but I don't think a movie has to have anything to say. I think what a movie can say to me is, Strap in, this is gonna be fun. And this movie was a ton of fun. Uh, I'm speechless. So Nightmare at Noon, I think I've told you enough about the plot. It's super fun, it's late 80s. It doesn't feel like a super 80s e movie, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a heck of a lot of fun. And the uh, transfer is great. It looks, I mean, it's Arrow, so you know it's going to, but I figure I would mention it every time. It looks great. If the only way you've seen Nightmare at Noon, I don't remember if this ever had a DVD release, but if the only way you see have seen Nightmare at Noon is the way I would have seen it back in the 80s, this looks fabulous. So one of the things you need to know, or you already do, about the Nico Mastarakis Omega Entertainment releases for Arrow is that uh, Mastarakis's company prepares a lot of the extras. So they're very... He seems like a very likable guy uh, who made fun movies with a great sense of humor, so this isn't done in, to insult the man in any way. They seem a little bit self-aggrandizing, and I don't know if that's uh, intentional uh, to just help promote the brand, if that's something that he firmly believes, or if he's doing it as a joke. A lot of his uh, commentary and a lot of the things he says in the extras are very self-deprecating, so I have to imagine he's probably doing it as a joke. But you get, so apparently they shot a ton of high eight, which was at the time he says, and I remember, uh, it was the highest consumer home video quality. So high eight camera. Uh, I worked at a production company when I started high eight was what we shot on. So he says, you know, at the time it was the highest quality. Now it looks pretty bad on your TV, but uh, somebody shot a ton of high eight footage during the making of this. So you have, I don't didn't t I didn't tally the numbers, but it feels like hours of behind the scenes footage on the making of this film. Sometimes they'll show you all this behind the scenes stuff, and then they'll cut to the scene from the movie so you can see what it looked like in the finished product. Some really really good interviews, like surprisingly good and deep interviews with some of the cast members, each of which runs 15 minutes or more. Um, fascinating of all places and times. Fascinating George Kennedy interview uh, talking about being an actor and what it's like to be a working actor. And uh, interesting Wings Hauser interview, uh, Kimberly Beck interview, interesting Bo Hopkins interview uh, that were just done on the set when they had a little bit of downtime. And um, it was really good. So there's uh, Hans Zimmer uh, co-composed, Hans Zimmer who went on to do very, very A-list titles, none of which I can think of at this point, but anybody who's watching this who knows more about um, Popular mainstream films of the 80s and 90s than I do are probably yelling at me right now to tell me all the titles. But uh, Hans Zimmer co-did the uh, score on this. And one of the extras is a still gallery accompanied by, I think it's like 12 minutes of score. I've never seen an image gallery done this way before. It's chaptered, so you can chapter through the audio for the score, but it's like the same 12 photos over and over again. So usually with an image gallery, I step through and look, and sometimes they're cool, and sometimes they're not as interesting. And as I'm cycling through, I'm like, this is the same photos over and over again. I hit, it, I hit play, and I'm like, oh, it's because it's, they didn't have enough photos to, to last the duration of the audio. But if you're uh, a Nightmare at Noon fan, if you're a Nightmare at Noon obsessive, uh, this is a really, really nice package. And if you've never seen the movie and you like old, fun, trashy movies like I do, this is a lot of fun, and it's pretty darn well made. And uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And this is one where I almost wished it was longer, but uh, it really it does what it needs to do. It, it knows what it's doing and it takes the right amount of time. So my, my highest recommendation of, of recent weeks, I would say, for an Arrow video release, bizarrely, is Nightmare at Noon.